Hello everybody. It's been a while since I've done a video and I apologize. Life has been busy, stressful, tragic, and now here we are in election week and 2020 is still not over. Um, I get a lot of questions about my indoor garden, which you've seen me do a couple of videos on. And the majority of my indoor garden is based on arrow garden units. However, I wanted to let everyone know that you do not have to spend um, a bunch of money on electronic gadgets. Now, the holidays are coming and you can catch Arrow Gardens at a great deal. Um, I actually just bought a newer one to replace one of my older units for only 67 bucks this week um, from Kohl's after coupons and cold cash. And that is totally possible. Black Friday is coming, Christmas is coming. There will be great deals from many, many websites that carry them. And I do love them, I recommend them, and I think everyone should have one or two if you are interested in gardening. But that's not the only way to have an indoor garden. Obviously, if you have the space, you can have a grow room, you can have your um, plants in dirt, you can have a whole indoor um, greenhouse, so to speak. But I am, not for the dirt when it comes to growing vegetables in the house. They draw bugs um, and it's just messier in my opinion. So I like to stick with hydroponics. The Aero Gardens are technically hydroponics and there are many other ways that you can do hydroponics. There's deep water culture and there is cracky. Now a lot of what I started um, at the beginning of the season for summer uh, is dwindled down has gone and some of my indoor stuff I also um, kind of let go to end of life but I still have some things to show you so I'm gonna do that really quick okay so when I started doing this I learned about um, hydroponics by reading Facebook groups watching tons and tons of YouTube videos and doing lots of Google searches and my favorite easy way to uh, do things with indoor gardening is hydroponics, like I mentioned, and cracky jars, K-R-A-T-K-Y. Um, I say jars, but because that's what I use mostly, but you can do cracky in almost anything. And basically what that is, is suspending the plant above water to the point where the roots are in the water, but there's a gap between for air to build up and that's how the roots get their oxygen. So over here we have a Chinese five color pepper plant which I started from seed um, in my arrow garden and I put in here and this is going to show you that you can use just about anything. So the basics for starting a cracky jar is a mason jar. I use the amber mason jars on the advice of some people in a Facebook group because you don't have to worry about covering them. Um, this finish, the brownish finish, holds out over 99% of light, which is what we want. You don't want light to get in your jars because you can get algae. You can use a clear jar. You can even use this. You wanna know what this is? This is a vase from Dollar Tree. One dollar for this. And I discovered that the three inch net cups fit inside perfectly. So when I was using these, I just covered the vase in a sock, a nice long sock, and it worked perfectly. So those are the basics, a container, preferably a jar, depending on your plant size. You can even use an old ice cream bucket. This is one that I beat up pretty good this summer but I covered it in black duct tape to keep light out. <clears throat> That's a one gallon container. And when I had my cucumbers outside, I used a um, two and a half gallon bucket. I put the lid on it and that's what I used and it worked perfectly. So you have your container, you have your net cup, as mentioned, these are three inch ones, and then you have clay pebbles. These are what I like to use. Some people use different things, but what this does is hold your plant in place 
and keep light from going down in there. So for example, in this one, you're gonna see the arrow garden pod right here because I started this plant in my arrow garden and decided to move it out to a jar. You're also going to notice that instead of a traditional net cup, all I have right here is a purple cup, also from the Dollar Tree, that come in a pack of like 20 for a dollar. And the reason I did this is because this was an already established plant. It already had roots on it, so there would be no way I was going to fit that through the bottom of my net cup. However, in addition to these pretty strong net cups, I also have a stash of thinner ones that are very easy to cut through the bottom. So what I could have done was taken this and fed the plant through there. And I did do that with another plant. But for this one, I just used the cup. I measured the height to make it match pretty much a net cup, cut a hole in the bottom, and I was able to feed the roots through. Now you mostly want to do that when your plants are still relatively small because depending on the plant, the roots can get really thick and really long. So you want to put it in here while you still can. Um, if the roots get too big, you might not be able to take it out of your arrow garden. You might not be able to fit it um, easily into one of these jars. But other than just moving plants from elsewhere out of the arrow garden, you can start plants from seed in a cracky jar. And the way you would do that is really pretty easy. So this is one I was using already. What you would need if you're starting from seed is rock wool or some other medium like that. I like rock wool. You can also get um, the um, Aero Garden sponges. There are a few companies that make replacement ones. Some people use pool noodles, which some of them fit right in here. But I like these because I can start my seeds in them like just on a tray of water and once they sprout I can move it here so you're gonna need your seeds and you see these type already have a little hole right there in the middle so you would just put your seed in there then you're gonna want to nest this in your net cup like so and you want to make sure it's stable in the middle so the best way to do that is put a layer of rocks on the bottom to raise it up a little bit like so Okay, and then you want to put rocks around the sides. To hold it in place. Okay, just that simple. Now, it's okay for this part to get light while you're sprouting. But if I was actually putting a seed in here um, and then once it's, once it establishes, I'm going to want to cover that up a little bit because these things can develop algae. And so what I found online on Amazon was the thinner net cups that I mentioned actually came with covers. So you just take this cover and snap it over the top and that's going to keep the light from getting in there. And then that whole thing just fits into your jar. After that, if you're starting a brand new seed, then I'll use this one here. See, all of these, it fits great. So when you're starting a brand new seed, obviously that seed needs to stay wet. So you're going to fill your jar all the way up and make sure the bottom of the water touches the sponge so that it can stay damp. What's going to happen is as that plant starts to grow, the water level is going to go down. The roots are going to start to come out the bottom of the net cup and then you won't need as much water because once roots establish, you wanna make sure you keep that little bit of a air pocket in there for the plant to get oxygen. So in my 32 ounce jars, there's tomato. These are heirloom cherry tomatoes that I also started in my arrow garden. So in this one, on the sides of the jar here, you see levels, 400 milliliters. If you turn it around, that comes in ounces, okay? But I, I, I get stuck on the 400. So when I refill these, I always fill it up to no higher than 400. Now that's because these are small jars kept in my house. If you were really serious about not wanting to refill your um, hydroponic 
um, container, you're going to use a bigger container, one gallon, two gallon, five gallon, depending on what plant you're doing. These are dwarf tomatoes. They say really stay really small. If you're going a regular size tomato, you're going to want a five gallon bucket. You're going to fill up your level and some say you might not have to fill it up again for the life of the plant, but I've not found that to be the case, especially, um, if you have it outside where it's warm, the water is not only going to feed the plant, it's going to evaporate a little bit. So you're going to have to feel that. Um, but that's basically it. Recapping, you need some sort of container, mason jar, vase, ice cream bucket, Folgers coffee container or whatever. As long as you either have the appropriate size hole or you can cut the appropriate size hole in the top of the container, you can use a three inch net cup. Net cups also come in two inches and one inches. So pick the size you're most comfortable with for what you're doing. I like the three inch for these because they fit perfectly in the wide mouth mason jars. And then you're gonna have your net cup, you're gonna have your clay pebbles and your rock wool and you're gonna have your seeds. Set that up, put it under your grow light, which you'll see behind me. I have some just nestled between my arrow gardens. And then I also have a grow light there. That is a root farm grow light. So I have plants under there because if you're inside, it's going to be harder for those plants to get the appropriate amount of sunlight. So you want to make sure your young seedlings, um, when they start to sprout, are getting enough light to actually grow. And you can do this pretty cheap. I mean, right now, mason jars are hard to come by. But if you go with the dollar store idea, this is a dollar. You can get like 20 of these on Amazon for about 12 bucks. Clay pebbles are not expensive. You can build this whole thing right here for under $5 and have your indoor plant. Do a few of these, invest a little money in a grow light, and there you have it. You can grow peppers, you can grow tomatoes, you can grow herbs, you can do lettuces, you can do all kinds of stuff. So that's just one way to start your indoor garden. See y'all next time. Please hit like and subscribe.